I'm Renee Ritchie, your friendly neighborhood YouTube creator liaison. I'm Johanna, and I'm the chief product officer at YouTube. Which creators have you gotten to meet so far? Okay, so far I've gotten to meet Ashley Yee, um, Alan Chicken Chow, Good Good, uh, Jimmy, Mr. Beast. Yeah, it's been so fun to meet creators and see what they're going through hear what experiences they're having using our product. Yeah, there's no amount of work you can do internally that ever equals the reaction to people who are using your product every day. I know. It's so cool. It's so cool. And our viewers, too. There's so many people who are just using YouTube in their day-to-day life. What is your go-to beverage, your comfort drink? Uh, I'm all about coffee. Uh, do you like coffee? I coffee love or coffee. Tea? Coffee. Just coffee. Like, all coffee all the time. I'm uh, Coffee's probably my go-to beverage. I actually drink some decaf. Okay. I uh, love oat milk. Do you like oat milk? I love oat milk. Oat milk latte is my thing. Okay, yeah, I like all kinds. What does a chief product officer do? Yeah, the way I think of my job is that I'm responsible for the product of YouTube. What it is, the apps that you look at, how do they work, the whole systems around and the features around YouTube. What I do day to day is manage the people that are called product managers and the UX team, UX researchers, UX designers, writers, all the people who are working on those elements of craft of YouTube. A feature might be uh, when you long press and then YouTube speeds up. The way that that is developed is a product manager, a designer, they'll work on that idea, they'll write out the specifications, they'll work with the engineering team, they'll work with our users, and then they'll make sure that that gets built. So then what would like a typical day be for you? So I start my days early. I try to get up at 5.30. Some days I'll work out in the morning. Some days I will respond to email and try and do deep work when I'm not having meetings, get my kids to school. When I get to the office, a lot of what I do is uh, work with my team. We'll meet about new features. We'll meet about... The reactions that people are having to old features. We'll talk with our stats team about how the product is doing in different areas of the world. It just sounds like such a big job because you have creators and viewers, advertisers and policy. How do you go about setting any priorities for all that? I spend a lot of time thinking about our mission. Give everyone a voice, show them the world. The first one is creators. For large creators, we try and make this the best place to run a business. How to have the best tools to grow your audience and really make sure you're running your business as best as you can. For small creators, it's really about how do you get started? How do you get over that hump, that fear of creating a video? How do we have amazing tools in in the shorts uploader so you can just make something easily and express yourself very easily? The second area are viewers. And that's really about how do we get everyone the content that they want to watch? All the great content that's very best for you. How does that show up in your home feed and your watch next. When you're searching, how do you get what you want? How is that the simplest experience? And then the third area is responsibility. And so we want to do this in a way to make sure that YouTube is a responsible actor in society. We had a couple creators also send in their questions. First one comes from Jacqueline Dallas. I feel like creators are so excited for thumbnail A-B testing, and I would love to know when it's going to roll out to everyone. I love that feature because A-B thumbnail testing is when you take and let a creator show different versions of their thumbnails. Right now, it's three versions of their thumbnails and see which one performs the best. For thumbnails that are people are testing, a lot of times just the act of testing can give creators a 5%, 3 to 5% uplift. Wow. Interesting things also like Mr. Beast discovered that a closed mouth actually works better in a thumbnail for him than an open mouth. He was so happy to find that out. This idea came out of how we do product development in our own teams. So for example, that feature I talked about where you long press and the video speeds up, our team tried out multiple versions of that, tried them on the site, saw which ones worked best. And then we said, not with this specific feature, but that kind of development where you try out a bunch of things was something we thought would be great to get into the hands of our creators as well. This test right now, we've rolled out to 50,000 creators in order to get feedback about how to make the feature better. And we're hoping to get it live to everyone in the coming year. Next question is from Andrew Edwards. I'm a huge fan of AI tools, and I think I'm convinced it's gonna change how we make content going forward. That being said, as a video creator myself, I'm curious, how do you think about AI as it pertains to YouTube? When I think about AI, I really think of two things. We have invisible AI, invisible AI. Invisible AI, we've been doing forever at YouTube. Our recommendation systems, our trust and safety systems, search, these are all running on invisible AI and we'll continue to use that as our technology. And then when I think about visible AI, I really think about um, generative AI that blew the world away uh, in the past year. And that's really interesting because it's about generation. It's about creation. And so is YouTube. YouTube's about generation and creation. Actually, when we talk about giving everyone a voice, I really want to 
hone in on how important original content is to YouTube mm -hmm. and how much we think that original voice that comes from authentic creators, how important that is to our platform. And so when I think about AI, I think it's about supercharging the original voice of creators, doing things about helping them expand their reach, like with Allowed, which helps you get your content to audiences around the world. That's our, our dubbing features. Yeah. Or our research tab that helps you come up with new ideas for videos to make. Or Dream Screen or um, Dream Track that helps creators um, put on different backgrounds or come up with different songs. So it's really about the voices of our creators and hoping to help them come up with better ideas, newer ideas, and supercharge their creativity. If you were going to start a brand new YouTube channel this year, what would it be about? I would probably try and do like a dog comedy. Really? dog a dog comedy. <laughs> dog comedy. But my I idea like would be a day in the life of my dog. Okay. And then when you're looking ahead to the future, can you give us a hint about the roadmap? No spoilers, Renee. But of course, there are things that we've already announced that everyone knows about. Yeah. Um, themes that I think people should think about. One, of course, is AI. Yeah. We've talked a lot about AI. Another theme, uh, second theme will be living room. Neil spoke about living room in his creator letter. And it's really fascinating for us how much living room has grown. We have over a billion hours of people watching in the living room every day. And that's going to be a really interesting area to keep an eye on. This year is also interesting because did you know that 40% of the globe is going through elections yeah. in 2024? That really hones in on the importance of our responsibility work and making sure that our viewers can get authoritative and useful information in such important times. Thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate this. This is fantastic. It was so great to, to talk with you, Renee. Thank you for having me. You too. And of course, if you have any comments, any questions, just leave them below and keep it real.